Muzyka z oddani. Podcast o muzyce eksperymentalnej, improwizowanej i awangardowej. Prezentuje Grzegorz Tyszkiewicz. Hello, here is Grzegorz Tyszkiewicz. I run Bochum Records and this is my first uh, podcast in English. My guest is Mats Gustafsson and we are in Pardon to Tour. And you start tour with your last LP with Fire. Can you tell something about this? Yeah, I mean, the, the latest record uh, with the Fire Trio is called Testament. Yeah. And we, it's entirely new material, and we worked on the new material two years ago, and then we went over to Chicago uh, to record with uh, Steve Albini at Electrical Audio. Uh, so it's a very special release, of course, uh, and emotionally very much so since uh, Steve passed away, and that's this is a big hole in creative music community mm-hmm. uh, but I mean with the record itself the music itself we are very very happy to take our music after almost 15 years to uh, in a slightly new direction in a slightly new dynamic as well mm-hmm. uh, at least on the record when we play live we tend to heat up the the music a bit I think but uh, it's It's a new, it's a new time. It's a new attitude, and uh, it's a different. It's, it's totally different. It's, it's different, and, yeah. and it's still fire. Yeah. And uh, we're really happy. I mean, we had a, almost a two-year-old, two-year break yeah. uh, with the trio, and we did different things. Fire Orchestra was doing things. Andreas was doing other things, and uh, we, we can't live without fire. And that's the yeah. that's the truth. So now we're back touring. Uh, next year pretty heavily yeah. and a little some cho- specially chosen uh, gigs this fall and uh, it's great to start everything up at Pardon to Two which is yeah, I always think, Pardon to Two <laughs> yeah I mean it's it's all it's, it's uh, great to be honest it's uh, one of the best if not the best club there is in Europe right now there's a couple of really good ones of course but Pardon is magic it's really amazing I mean Mats I think that you have a special um Task and special skills that you can join the people. For example, you can you you, you just build a network around the Europe. For example, in I've been thinking for a while that your records and are divided into a kind of series. A bit different music is recorded and released on Trust. A bit different is on on Rune Gramophone, and totally different is on Boston Records. For example. It's important uh, for you to divide your activities, or it's not divide, but it's join the different people. Uh, it, it's a good question, and it's not it's not always e- easy to answer because it's as you choose to work with different musicians, mm-hmm. you always you also choose to work with different labels, and it seems to me that. It's a big palette of creative music that I'm interested in. Mm-hmm. And in general, I'm interested in music that deals with friction and energy, mm-hmm. and that can be on different levels and uh, can sound slightly different. But it's it's always there's always improvisation in in it, uh, yeah. and in some cases to a higher degree or a less degree. But it's. I mean, I, I collaborate with five or six labels frequently, yeah. of which Bochan is one of the, them yeah. and uh, very Trost. important to me. And Trost, and there's Rune, there's Corbett versus Dempsey, yeah. uh, there's a couple of other labels as well. And there's always new labels popping up who wants to do stuff. Yeah. Uh, I try to be a bit restrictive now and not do. Not, I don't need to find new collaborations with labels because the mm-hmm. labels I work with right now I, I trust yeah. very much, you know. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Good <laughs> yeah. to hear. I mean, yeah, yeah. That's, that's great. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> that's great that I'm a part of this no, of I mean, work. <laughs> it's, a, it's a natural 
way for me, and it's uh, certain things. If you, if I look at Bocha Records and the release, what what is on the label, mm. uh, that tends to be more experimental in yeah. a way, and and usually a lot elec noise or electronically based music yeah. more than Corbett or Stemsy is doing. Oh, uh, yeah. And so it's... Uh, sometimes it's good to fuck with those things and yeah. uh, and go against expectations because I, I don't like expectations too much. I don't like to label music uh, at all. And I think it's up to everyone what, what they want to call the music oh. or not. Uh, but for instance, this collaboration I have with Leif Elgren, who is... Uh, one of the kings in Elia Land, Varia Land. Also for me, the and hero uh, <laughs> from he the 80s. Hero. Yeah, yeah. He's a master <laughs> and I mean, I'm so inspired by by him yeah. and it's a pleasure to work with him since many years now and the uh, collaborations with him, yeah. I I wouldn't suggest on Corbett versus Dempsey or Trost. Uh, yeah. It feels much more related to the stuff that you were doing with Bocham, yeah. for instance. But it's always a matter of communication and to talk with the labels because yeah. the labels are as important as the musicians you know yeah, and you, sure. you look for certain collaborations and you need to build up uh, a trust and respect as in the same way as you do with the music and uh, as it is with music also you have to have patience yeah. I mean some with some groups that has a very definite plan of touring and doing this and that, it's important to have a record done fast. Uh, and in some other cases, like with the work with Leif Elgen, it doesn't have to be fast. It can, you know, it's as long as it's going to yes. be good and nice design and nice everything. Focus uh, on the details. Yeah, even though it, and if, it, it sounds it's, it's lo-fi, okay. it's not lo-fi. You know, then it's okay if it takes yeah. some time and. Uh, this music is built on trust and respect yeah. and it's not fast consumption music yeah. in the same way as like slow food yeah. which is slow music and I think it's important to understand this and also deal with that in, in, in the way that the music deserves. I'm very happy that I that you did this that you made so much opportunities that you that you can provide all this concert, for example, in Pardon to Two with Peter Bosman tribute, and we can met with John Corbett and with <laughs> Constantin uh, yeah, Drobin. I mean, and that was, I mean, the different countries, different cultures, uh, different childhood, I, I would say, but, uh, but the same attitude, the same, you know, no, I mean, it, it, the it's, same people. It's part of the same, it's like a big family, you know, yeah, but we it, are. it's a big <laughs> network. Yeah. And the network, expands all the time. I, yeah. I, that's my feeling. And it, there's sub nets and yeah. there's larger nets, but uh, it's important to to work on the relations and to expand Absolutely. friendships and or on prof professional levels as well. Uh, so like with the Brötzmann days we did here at, at Padun, it was a great opportunity for musicians and artists from very many different fields to meet under one umbrella that was the passing of Peter. Yeah. But nevertheless, it was very important to meet and make new relations, new collaborations. And I think Peter would have been very happy to see that and to hear yeah. that. Uh, and that's, I, I need to do this. This is part of my music. I need to expand the networks. I need to get people together. I need, yeah. I need, uh, Stephen O'Malley to check John St. Werner out yeah. and things opens up and things will happen and uh, I want to do stuff. I, I have problems with artists who just sit on their fat asses and wait for yeah. the telephone to ring. Yeah, yeah, or, or agents, yeah. It's This is do it yourself from day one yeah. and I, I'm very happy that I, when I grew up when I was 14 the punk rock scene exploded in, in Sweden like in the late 70s yeah. and that taught me so much and this is still valid do it yourself no one else is doing it for you and this is also something that Brötzmann for instance always talked about and there's no one else doing this for you yeah. you do it yourself and you do it with the people 
that you trust and that trust you and then you build from there. No one else is doing it. I mean, okay, with FIRE now we have a great agency it's called Swamp book, Booking. Yeah. Three Italian guys that are based in Berlin and they're great. So they are helping us. But we need to trust them otherwise. Yeah, nevertheless, it, yeah. it is also part of the network. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You mentioned uh, Leif Algren. Maybe just a few words about Leif Algren from me. He's a king of England Vergland. Yep. He is a visual artist. He is uh, also a friend of Zbigniew Karkowski, who was also a very important artist yeah, yeah. for me. Yeah. Uh, but I'd like to ask you about the, your other inspiration, your other, I mean, um, masters. Do you consider Chris Bottom yeah. to be your master? Because, I mean, uh, we did, uh, I would say we did, because you are an uh, inspiration to me with this album Omen. I, th I think, I mean, Chris there is, he's a maestro. And I mean, the, the thing is, there's many masters you can look up to. And there's many artists and musicians that you can draw inspiration from. Yeah. Inspiration and information. Yeah. And uh, you have to keep, stay open. And if you do that, you will meet new masters, <laughs> and new inspirations. And I can't get enough of, I love to hear new things. I love to see new things. I love to read new things so I can develop my own music. Yeah. And for me, it's extremely important with literature, with poetry, with film, with theater, with visual art, with, with all the stuff. And it's, it's part of the same game. And I, of course, if I look historically, there's, there's been a handful of musicians that really meant shitloads to me, like Brotsman, like Christy Botten, like Droy Feiler. Yeah, Droy was here. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Two days ago. Two days ago, I know. That's, uh, I did a showcase of Watch Records and I invite Droy Feiler. He was very one person, he never published on Botchan, but I decide from my heart, from the deep of my heart, that I have to invite him. Of course. I mean, because he's, he's a master. He's, ex <laughs> he's an extremely important uh, artist but also a very important uh, political activist and yeah, i mean i indeed. when i was in my late teens i met him when i moved down to stockholm he took care of me and yeah, he sure. invited me to his house and taught me a lot about literature and politics yeah, sure. ideology yeah. blah, blah, blah. and this is crucial when you're young absolutely you know? for experimental i think i would say that for experimental scene the most important is community and some of the i would say your political or maybe social um, attitudes and to join people yeah. to orientation yeah. to join people to to integrate people for example i'd love your hydros with polish uh, musician because i think that i feel that you change a lot in their life by doing this large ensemble and I was there yeah. in Warsaw in radio. They, you played. That was a fantastic concert. Um, that was a huge inspiration as well from my perspective to to Lawrence much Morris maybe maybe yeah, conduct I mean, that blah you, blah blah. You do what you need to do. Yeah. Because of musical and artistic reasons, uh, I don't do anything to please anyone. Yeah. Uh, I don't even want to please myself, but I'm I'm dying to find out what happens when you combine this and that and this and that and, and uh, put it, put your music in new situations and uh, if it's an inspiration for anyone I, it makes me very happy that was great because the, 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 those people are from the different worlds yeah, yeah. I mean the drummer was a punk rock girl and the Pavel Romanchuk I'm, I will talk uh, talk to him next week yeah. this is the toy piano and yeah. all this uh, no, and I, I think that, that, that's the beauty when you work with creative music and improvised music, yeah. experimental music, that people can really come from all kinds of different social backgrounds or cultural backgrounds. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's it's who you are and what you do yeah. that's matter. And and I think it's in this in the times we're living right now, which are really fucked up from a climate standpoint, from political standpoints. Absolutely, it's more important than ever to choose that we can do stuff together, yeah. no matter from what kind of social or cultural backgrounds we, we come from. It's it's more important than ever that we can yeah. show this to, to people around and, and inspire not just the young generation, but inspire all generations to do art, to do creative things together. 
if you I mean, if you're able to listen openly you will learn how to think openly and then you will learn how to act yeah. openly and free and then it's already a political statement in itself and I, I think this is uh, we need we need to continue on this path yeah, otherwise sure. things will fucking collapse it's Most already collapsing yeah, if yeah, you yeah. look around you're in you yeah, know, yeah. in Gaza or Ukraine or in the USA right now it, it, it's so yeah. so on so many levels so fucked up and uh, yeah. desperate uh, so it's uh, we need to find ways to communicate better we need to find ways to create things together yeah and, and to present a new artists new yeah. musicians yeah, yeah. young people and yeah. so and so did your parents support you in your music education the what did your parents support you in parents your, in your, yeah parents uh, yeah I mean yeah I I think they never really understood what I was doing but uh, uh, they they were not totally against it either <laughs> oh yeah but I mean I, I never went to a school and th this is uh, I have no music education whatsoever you have no no nah, nothing. Uh -huh. and I'm, I'm very happy for that because uh, I took a little longer road but it's what you find along the road that's important it's not the goal to finish an education or something the only education I have on the university level is uh, uh, Umweltwissenschaft, uh, climate uh, science, basically. Yeah. I was studying in, in university for two years when I was 18 and 19. And so the whole climate collapse we are watching right now is uh, very important to me. And yeah. I, I follow it and uh, I try to live by it, you know. But yeah. uh, when it comes to music, it's. Uh, I'm very happy that I actually did not attend. Oh, yeah. like a, a academy or a university or something yeah it, but right now there's uh, it, it, it seems that there are a lot of changes in in at the, in this point because for example there are Copenhagen the this uh, artistic um, university I would say the, or academy yeah. yeah 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 it's it, I mean th th there's good schools yeah there's a lot of bad schools but it's, it all depends on the main teacher, so to speak. Yeah. If, if the teacher gives you freedom or if the teacher wants to show you the world. Yeah, create something that is already done. I mean, it's so, so, so much, you might feel always say, it's attitude is everything. Yeah. So if, if a school can be good for some people, yeah. I think also school can be a disaster for some other people. So you have to find your way and you have to learn. The only important thing is to learn to think critically and that, that's the only thing I really think is important with educating and having my children growing up that they mm -hmm. learn to think critically and that, that they learn to think on their own on this by themselves you know how and old are they uh, they are 10 16 and 30 oh, yeah uh, so, so it's uh, you have to work with that all the time, but you have to learn, teach them how to yeah. think themselves. You know that that's the thing. You know, don't trust everything around you. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, Mas, I have to ask you this because this podcast is also about maybe or may, maybe mainly about how musicians are coping in the age of music cannibalization by streaming services. Mm -hmm. It feels like your pitch is clear. Uh, you, you told let's create a kind of publishing and touring international network and build it up in spite of everything yep. as I understood it correctly yeah, yeah. do you think that um, that an action like can did with catalytic I admit can really and all these uh, little scattered little labels are able to create an alternative to streaming and keep some independence, maybe we still back to the same repeated obsession and questions and answer. But it's important to me. It's very important to me too, and I I, I can't tell you how much I uh, value what Ken, especially Ken, has been doing for the music community. And no, yeah. I mean it's fucking tragic that people don't understand what he's actually doing. Absolutely. And I think I mean. If it, 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 
it's all commercial you know it's all mass consumption bullshit around us i mean yeah. spotify and other s- streaming platforms are robbing us of our music and yeah. our money and blah blah it's the worst rip off in music history for sure spotify is not the only one but spotify is the worst yeah. and fuck that shit i mean people don't need to be on spotify people need to present the music live first of all or yeah. or with physical objects and th- th- there are streaming services there are like bandcamp yeah one thing is so much better and so much better for the music so much better for the consumer also uh, so there are a lot of things to do but spotify is the cheapest shit ever you know it yeah. is consumer friendly but i hate yeah. that word consumer friendly i don't want to be consumer friendly i want yeah. the consumer to start to think and react you know yeah it's you you but will you 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 don't need to be lazy no, doing that, everything on but, your platinum but, but i think like with catalytic and what what ken is doing is it's tragic that not more people and we try the community we are a lot of musicians in i mean a lot of people understood this no nah, but not enough that's yeah. a, that this is the whole point it's like if more people would understand yeah. what we are trying to build they would subscribe to the service and if we had say if we have a hundred more people subscribing to our service we can extend we can make it bigger we can make uh we can advertise about it we can find new ways of getting even more people in it and then it can grow but it's very very slow because it's completely anti commercial it's yeah. completely independent that's the way we want to have it but i am shocked that not more people understood understand it understand. and subscription for catalytic is cheap you get a lot yeah. of music you lot of lot yeah. of unique music that you can't find anywhere else and and it's fair you, with you, the artist yeah, yeah. It, and it goes directly to the artist it goes to the yeah. community and This is the kind of networks this is the kind of communities we need right now because the the mainstream media and the way that like this awful social media things yeah. are working is not creative it's not good for creative music you know it's it's good for spreading the message but it's controlled yeah by algorithms and, yeah. and sh- complete bullshit and then you have all this artificial intelligence shit coming yeah. in and I don't know people people are painting themselves into a corner and they don't know how to escape the corner they, they don't know that we are digging our own graves in a, in a yeah. way uh, I don't want to be negative about it but it's hard not to because there's so much stupidity around this I, yeah. I mean creative music will always be creative music but we we need we want to spread the music we want people to hear alternative music that is not for mass that is not like a commercialized yeah, yeah. it's not controlled controlled yeah and uh, we want to be independent and i think people in general they they want to be independent you know they want to think on their own they want to create something together with the people they love and respect and spend time Indeed. with and Indeed. we need we need this so for instance we need more people to join catalytics absolutely you know, or similar platforms but yeah. i don't I, i actually i'm not aware of so many other different platforms like this who is musician ran musician we own everything with with this network and i think it's a unique thing and hopefully other communities in re- different regions in the world can uh, copy this and we are very happy to present and, and inform people who are interested how to actually build a platform like this and how to build streaming platforms it's it's not difficult mm-hmm. just a short comment regarding Ken Vandenberg in the late 90s Ken got uh, money as an award award from the I don't, yeah from yeah. the foundation or yeah. and what what did he Uh, what he, what did he do how he spent this money he invite and he set up huge large ensemble and they play in Europe and that was the first step for some of these artists to be independent yeah, yeah. no I mean it's for example Kevin drum 
on the other hand, there is a uh, Michael Zarin. There's a lot of great musicians, very creative Chicago artists. Yeah, I mean, if, if more people was never would, existing before. I mean, if more people would think and act like Ken has been doing, we we would have a different scene. But Ken is very non-selfish, and I mean, the, when he won that prize, he was very young. Yeah. And of course, there was a lot of critique because they think he was too young, blah blah blah. But they, they never gave this prize to anyone better because yeah, he invested sure. in the Chicago community. He invested a lot of money into the Peter Brutzman Chicago Quintet. Yeah. All the tours we did, the first tours, the recordings, everything Ken took from this price money. Yeah. Completely non-selfish. And because this kind of music, this kind of art is about sharing yeah. and real sharing. And Ken is a super great example of that. And if you're not a willing to share, you can go and fuck yourself, basically. You Absolutely. Know? And, and Ken has been doing so much good for the scene, I can't even start to describe it, you know? Yeah. And uh, hopefully people will get inspired more by his actions and they will jump on yeah, the train sure. and also create But things. sometimes people f forget about this. For example, in Poland, they said that, uh, honestly speaking, that it's too much Ken van der Mark in Poland, in Europe, for example. I mean, it's a bullshit. Because this guy is very, it's, it's, very hard to working I mean, person. It's, it's pure and jeal it's jealousness and stupidity. Creative. And, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, and he all the time invited new people, new artists, new musicians to join him. So this is what I, but, I love. But th this also, is the kind of critique creative people yeah. usually get. I, I get that also myself. And, and fuck that. I don't care. You know, yeah. I, I cared when I was younger. I don't care now. I, I don't have to care. You know, I know what I'm doing and I know that I want to share my oh. knowledge, my experience with other people. And if there's anything I can teach anyone, I'm, that makes me very happy. Yeah. That's the way it should be. You, know, you should not protect your contacts or protect your networks. You should share them, you know, because <laughs> then the scene can make use of it. it. It's so simple and it's so stupid with people not doing it. That's a good, that's a good moment maybe to ask your last question. Uh, if you were starting over again right now, what would you change? <laughs> Nothing. Uh, There's no reason. <laughs> it's like a, it's There's, like no, a I mean, Samuel Beck. It's, it's a hypothetical <laughs> question. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I am extremely happy and proud that I was part of the do-it-yourself thing from mm -hmm. the start. And the more I work, the more I realize this is the road to walk. And it's always about the road. It's all, always about the path. It's not about the goal or the vision. It, I mean, partly is about yeah. the goal and the vision, but yeah. it's what you find along the road that you're walking. And, and yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, I, you know, it's everything happens for a reason, I think. Ah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and you met the people on your Yeah, life. and I mean, you, as long as you're willing to share, as long as you're willing to, to find new situations. I want to put my art, my music into new situations where I can find friction. Uh -huh. I don't want to jump on stage and to and know exactly what will happen on stage. I hate that situation. I don't want to do music like that. Uh -huh. I want music that can fuck me over. I want music with friction, with energy. Because then the audience who are there that evening or that day, they will understand, they will see it, they will hear it, and they will feel it. That friction is here only here now and not tomorrow and not yesterday and this is real sharing Mats, thank you very much my pleasure man yeah. Mats, <laughs> i love you yeah, i love you man <laughs> we, we spend a lot of time still a, talking no, a, yeah, but this is very, a, a little bit artificial situation for us because we have a microphone right I know, now it's official yeah, it's, it's we always yeah, have a microphone yeah, <laughs> microphones are good you know we can capture but, shit. yeah yeah but, yeah you know this is a we have a decent working relation and i think it uh, we are started you know there's a lot of shit to do hey leave a comments should i do it in english or in polish join catholic sound join Max gustafson on tour on tour buy records buy cds or just uh, go to the concerts <laughs> thank you very much yeah. thank you very much <laughs>